Well, welcome to our Wednesday night service, all those joining us online. And uh, we want God to be here in a mighty and powerful way. We want him to speak to us through his word. <clears throat> his word is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Speaks right to our hearts. And um, anybody realize that we're in spiritual warfare today? We yeah. have. So many things happening every day. It's like, I mean, we can't go one day without there just being peace and, you know, all this rebellion that's taking place all over the world. And it's good that we can come into the house of the Lord and just leave everything outside and just worship and praise the Lord together. We all need that refreshment. We all need that encouragement. And uh, so we just want to worship the Lord together. And, you know, let's all stand. Mike, come on up here and lead us in our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for taking the cross for us. You were beat. You were whooped. And then you carried the cross and you hung on the cross for three days for us. Now we have the Holy Spirit and the plan of salvation. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless this service. Bless this uh, worship, Lord. Send the Holy Spirit. Fill us with more knowledge and truth and love of you, God. Because of Jesus, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, you have been here through our prayer time. Meet us here tonight for our service. house where we love to sing your praises and we lift our hearts and our hands to the king of all the ages hear us lord we pray come jesus come come fill this place meet us here sing your praises and we lift our hearts and our hands to the king of all the ages hear us lord we pray come jesus come come fill this place meet us here meet us here We are strong when you surround us. Meet us here. Meet us here, Lord. As we gather in your name, meet us here.
your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean tides, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King, and I will find my strength in the shadow of your Oh, your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. And your righteousness is like a mighty mountain. Your justice flows like the ocean tides, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King, and I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Oh, your love. Reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Amen. Romans twelve. Um, verse 2 says uh, that we prevent our, present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to the Lord, which is a reasonable service, and be uh, not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, clear our minds and transform us. Clear my mind, Lord. Clear my mind. Let my thoughts be only of the purest kind. Clear my mind, Lord. Clear my mind. Come take your rightful place and make it thine. Clear my mind. thought be only of the purest kind. Clear my mind, Lord, clear my mind. Come take your rightful place and my heart, oh God, may it ever be true, change my heart, oh God, may I be like you, 
Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Hold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever true. like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Hold me and make me, this is what I pray. Change my heart, oh Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your embrace, Lord God. And Lord, we're going to um, take up tithes and offering. But Lord, we want to just set our mind and even there on, on you, Lord God, that we could sit before you with our hearts tuned to your heart, Lord God, that you would speak to us, that you would draw us closer into intimacy with you, Father, fellowship with you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to take up tithes and offering. We're going to sing another song after this, if you like, to stand up and worship some more. I don't know, but God is really moving in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is in this house. I mean, I see a house full of people worshiping God. Isn't that wonderful? Ah, my goodness. Because you know, it's so simple, especially in 2020, just to go to church. 2022, just to go to church and do our church thing. But there's another thing moving in the current, and it's Jesus drawing his people to him. Amen? We have to take ownership of that. Would you agree with that? Who can take ownership of that for yourself? Who can do it for you? Huh? God and you. That's it. That's it. But you're the only one. I'm the only one that can bone up and do that. Amen? So who needs it? Who who really needs something just from God tonight? Just a touch from God. Amen. Amen. I see it on some. Amen. Me too. We're gonna to take up the tithes and offering, and if you give a tithe unto God, give it in, to God in faith and obedience to the Word of God. Don't just give it. And if you believe God's telling you not to give it, well then then use faith to not give it. But, you know, don't just have an opinion. Use the Word of God to lead you on that. You know what I'm saying? I've had a lot of people say, well, don't have to do that. But I've asked them, well, give me a scripture. Nobody can give me a scripture. But there is scriptures about giving to God. Amen. It also says give obediently and cheerfully. Amen. And do you know that when you give to God, whether it's finances, whether it's time, whether it's praise, whether it's worship, whether it's sacrifice, it's all on the other side. There's nothing that you've given here that you're going to lose. You're going to gain it all on the other side. But if you don't give it, you can't gain it on the other side. You know? God's arithmetic is different from ours. If you give, it's how you get. But if you take, then you get nothing. Amen? So, Lord, even now by faith, I pray for the hearts of those here. Lord, if we struggle with giving tithes, I pray that you would make it clear by the voice of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, that you would lead us and bring understanding that we could give obediently and faithfully, Lord God. And Lord, 
You own everything. So it's not about the money. It's about intimacy and relationship and faith and trust with the Father. And you said on the cross, it is finished. So, Lord God, we ask you just to seal these things in the mighty name of Jesus. So as the usher comes, we're going to pray for Will real quick. Do you mind, Will, if we pray for you? Everybody reach your hands towards Will. Will's uh, going to do radiation this week, next week. So be thinking whenever Will drops into your mind, don't think that's just an accident. That's God dropping Will into your mind that you can pray for him. Amen? Oh, Lord God, we thank you for Will. Lord, he's your child of the Most High God. We know that you've called him out of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord God, we know that you're doing a work in him, Lord, and it's you're not done, Lord God. So even now, by faith, we ask you, Lord, to remove the spirit of fear that the enemy would try to come at him, Lord God, and we ask you to replace it with the spirit of faith, Lord God. We pray that you would miraculously, Lord God, touch down and reach where he's at and bring healing, Lord God. But, Lord, if you desire to use the medical instruments that we have today for us, Lord, we ask you to use them, Lord. And we ask you to give the doctor's wisdom and understanding, Lord, as he goes forward in faith and obedience. Lord, and we rebuke the lies and the attack of the enemy off of this body. We plead the blood of Jesus. By the stripes of Christ, we are healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So as we sing another song, I, I, I'd encourage you just to enter into worship, okay? Purify my heart, let me be as gold. And precious silver purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, wreathed finest fire. My heart's one desire is to be. Choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Purify my heart, cleanse me from my sin, and make me holy, purify. Cleanse me from my sin, deep within, refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord, I choose to be. So we're going to uh, continue on this series looking at the fivefold ministry. Has anybody gotten, not from me, but has God spoke anything to you in the last week regarding the fivefold ministry or any in the last couple of weeks what he might have spoke specifically to anybody? I hope you hear from God. Because I don't know about you, but I know he's been speaking to my heart. And, you know, this week specifically, this is what he specifically spoke to me this, this morning and last night. That we need the body of Christ like we would never even imagine. Amen? The body of Christ is so vital to the move of God. And the enemy, that's why the enemy, the first thing he wants to do is get us not to go to church. 
How many people, have you said it yourself, or you've heard somebody say it, you don't need to go to church to be saved? Anybody said that or heard that? Yeah, amen. But when you're sitting at home by yourself watching Netflix or whatever, it's hard to be convicted, too, by the Lord. Amen? It's hard to hear the voice of God, too, at that time. Yes, exactly. And as we're studying through the fivefold ministry, this is one of the things that God showed me. We're going to look tonight about to teacher. But the, the one thing he showed me is that he is the great teacher. And he came down, and I don't know if you know it, but he became an apostle a prophet, an evangelist, a teacher, and a pastor, a good shepherd. And then he said, now those are all titles of his. And then he didn't just come down and be them or claim them and receive them and apprehend them, but he operated in them. And he walked in them, and he captivated the gifts, and they were the fivefold ministry that he was going to give to us, you and I, as a gift. And it says in the scriptures that it's a gift that he gives to us. It's gifts he gives to men. And he gives it to us for a very important reason. Does anybody remember what the reason for? That? Edify the body of Christ. Exactly right. And this is a cool thing about it. It must be important because God not only captivated it, walked in it, received the title. I say it like this. He had to earn the title. Do you know Jesus had to earn the title of Lord? He did. He had to see it through all the way to the end. If he would have gave up on the cross when it got difficult, he would have lost. We, would, we wouldn't be here today. You see what I'm saying? He had to earn the title. He even said, I can't remember the scripture, Pastor might be able to help me, but he said because he's done this, he, he took the cross and he died, and then he says, then after that, God set everything underneath him. He had to earn the right to redeem mankind, Right? Sometimes we give Jesus a break. We think, well, it's easy for Jesus. He's God. Well, I say it like this. He was God because God put his seed in a virgin woman. So he's God because he comes from God. And he's 100% God based on that. But he's also 100% man. Yes, he is. Come on. And he had flesh like you and I that he had to battle with. Except he didn't have the fallen nature like you and I. So he was victorious. And he got the victory over his flesh. Think about this. Did Jesus wrestle with the devil in the wilderness? He did. Let me ask you, and how old was Jesus at that time? 30, 33? You don't think the devil was wrestling with Jesus when he was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? Exactly. At that point, we read and go, oh, man, he wrestled with the, de the devil in the wilderness. Well, at that time, he was pretty seasoned. But he wasn't seasoned at 5, 6, 7 when his flesh wanted to sin exactly right so we know at 12 years old for sure he knew what he was up to but there's another scripture that said i don't remember what it is but he uh he was on his mama's breast as a baby and i think that that scripture when i read it it makes me think that he knew even then what he was getting ready for he had a young age don't you think god knows how to speak now he had a baby's understanding but still there was a communication all of his life and there was a fight and he had to come and he had to apprehend all of these gifts Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, uh, teacher, amen. And then it says in uh, uh, Ephesians 4 that he gave them back to us. Now think about this. If he had to come and grab them and, and walk in them, do you think he uh, learned how to walk in them well? Do you think he was a great prophet? Probably the greatest prophet ever, right? Do you think he was a great shepherd? A great evangelist? And he passed it on to you and I. And then as a teacher, he teaches us how to be those things. Amen? And it's the five-fold ministry that God uses. See, I think we got away from it in the Church of America, the five-fold ministry, for a lot of reasons. For one thing, what is the five-fold ministry? Anybody, anybody know off the top of your head? What is the office of it? It is. But, so it's a leadership thing. Would you agree with that? So I know myself, and I've talked about as I'm reading some of this, nobody wants to stand up and say, hey, you know, I'm a part of the fivefold ministry. You better listen to me. You see what I'm saying? So people are afraid kind of to say that. And I'm not saying that because I'm the least guy I want to listen. I'm, 
This is what I know about being a leader, especially in the church. You know what it takes to be a leader in the church? A whole lot of sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? Right? It's not, it's not, a, it's not like a, um, it's not, it seems like a cool thing. It's not about power. See, we're in America. The power is a place of leadership. But in God's system, well, let's go real quick. and We'll get back to this. Let's go to, um, let me get my glasses. John chapter 13. This is what he said about being a teacher. This, I love this scripture. This sets it all off. So we've gotten away from it. Have, let me ask you this. Is a pastor, do you think it's easy for a pastor to sit up here and tell people they need to pay tithes? See, it doesn't bother me because I don't have no, no skin in the game. You see what I'm saying? No, I, I know this. None of the money in, that comes into this church comes to me. So I have no problem saying it. But not only that, I've been paying tithes for 30 years in my life. And I've never once regretted paying tithes. This is what I did get about paying tithes. When I was paying tithes, I knew I was in good standing with God. And when the bill came in, you wouldn't believe how many times the bill came in. And before the incident came, and I go, man, where did I get this extra money from? And then the incident came. I go, oh, thank you, God. Because you knew that the bill was coming before. See, that's how you. And the, the reason I preach tithes so much is because I want you and I, everyone in here, to have the intimate relationship with God going forward to know beyond a shadow of the doubt that you're hooked up in union with God with your finances. And when the burdens come, you can head them face on. You can even stand on the word of God and say, God, you said you'll rebuke the devourer. You'd open up the floodgates of heaven and pour a blessing on me in such a degree I can't handle. See, that's what paying tithes does. It gives you boldness on who God is. Does it earn you merit? Does it earn you status? No, it doesn't. But you know what it does? It builds confidence. Abraham, uh, didn't Jacob learn about tithes on his way? And he said, God, when he met him, remember he had Jacob's ladder, and God met him, and he said, God, if you're going to take care of me, and you're going to send me on this trip, and you're going to bring me back, and you're going to be my God, and you're going to take care of all the things I need, then I'm going to give you 10%. See what I'm saying? Because right that moment he yoked up. And, you know, there's only one other time that says that very scripture where angels ascend and descend from heaven was in the Bible. Jesus said it. So there's two times it was said in the Bible about that very thing. One, Jacob said, and he realized, man, if I pay my tithes, God's going to take care of me. That's why I preach him so much, because I want you to walk in union with God, knowing he's going to he'll take care of you anyway. He'll take care of you. anyway. But you can go forward and boldness you can go forward in blessing or you can go forward struggling because this is what i did find out about people that pay tithes they're never complaining about money they always have enough and i don't know any of them that are rich but they always have enough but the people that don't pay tithes they're always saying man i need anything i can get i'm about broke and payday for another two weeks they're always struggling so you go huh so I don't preach tithes because I want your money. I don't care about your money. I, I got my own money to, deals to deal with. You see what I'm saying? It's got about intimacy with God. Amen. Let's go real quick to uh, 13. Because I'm not even trying to talk about tithes. Who gets upset when I get talking about tithes? How many people in here have said, you know what? You're right. I'm going to start paying tithes. Anybody? One, two. Have you regretted it? Has it been a blessing to you? Has God showed himself almighty on behalf of you? Amen. Have you come to, sometimes came to a place where you still had need? And you still need to get in the soup line or something? Well, praise God. But there's sometimes needs still come about. But you know what? In the process of that need, God knows how to meet that need. Amen? So let's read this. this is where, the teacher, because this is what we're talking about. The teacher. This is what he said. John 13, 13. You, you call me teacher. And that's a capital T. So he's speaking to his people that are calling him. Do you call him teacher? And Lord? And he said, and you say well, for so I am. Now, isn't that wonderful? He's saying, he's acknowledging that you recognize that I'm a teacher, not me, Jesus. You recognize it, and I am a teacher, and I am Lord, and you say well. You said the exact right thing. That's what he's saying. Verse 14. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 
For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So this is what I think about a teacher. This is what God showed me. He walked in all the offices, and if you read the fivefold ministry, it says, uh, apostle, must, most important, you need an apostle because it goes out and establishes a church. Prophet, you need a prophet, right? Because a prophet will declare righteousness. And then it says you need an evangelist is the next thing. You need an evangelist. What does an evangelist do? It declares the gospel. And then he says, you need a shepherd, a pastor. And then the very last thing he brings up is teacher. See, he walked in all of those things. He walked in all those gifts. He mastered them. He grabbed a hold of them. He took authority over them, owned them. And then his teacher, he said, I'm going to give them to you. And I'm not just going to give them to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to walk in the exact same gifts that I've mastered. And I've gotten authority. And... Do you ever try to teach somebody below you in uh, understanding like a child or something? Don't you, when you do the teaching, you want to teach them well so that they know how to do it right? And if they're not doing it right, you come along and you kind of, you don't try to go and, and ruin it for them. You dummy, don't you know? That's what my dad used to say, you dummy. <laughs> but, now you know why I'm so hard-headed sometimes. But, but as a teacher, you teach somebody, and then you, sh you show them the ropes, and then you come alongside and call them. Look what he says. I'm going to read it again. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet. See, if I've showed you how to be an apostle and a prophet and an evangelist, and I've washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. See, he's given an example how to walk in the fivefold ministry that he has given us. Amen? For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, as a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. See, he could have been an apostle and said, look how great I am. But he didn't do that. Amen. He could have been a prophet that said, I can declare things to the end of time. And look how great I am. You see what I'm saying? He was God in the flesh, but he didn't do any of that. He walked in all of these things, and then he humbly brought them, and he brought them to us, and he says, I'm going to set the example how to walk in what I've given you. See, we have all been given the same gifts, the five-fold ministry. Now, when we first get saved, do you know if you are or not going to be an apostle? Anybody? A prophet? An evangelist? Do you know that? You don't. How would you find out? Exactly right. How else? Yeah, that's a, that'll work. But that, what did you say? Somebody said something. God's word. Amen. What else? Fellowship with God. Fellowship with God. Amen. Because hey, is it the gift to the church? So is it a, 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 is it viable for anybody to grab the gift? So to find out if we have the gift, we do that by the way we follow God, the way we pursue God, the way we surrender to the voice of God when he speaks. Because, see, this is what God does. God's not uh, like the world's leaders. God leads by killing himself. God leads by crucifying his flesh. God leads by sacrifice. God leads, and in the, in, the, in the process of sacrificing, then you grow in the spirit realm, and then you grow into the actual positions that God has ordained for you. And it, the ordained for God, God has ordained for every one of us to have a place in the body of Christ, wherever it might be. But if we think, I'll never be a prophet, or I'll never be an evangelist, or I'll never be a teacher, then we'll just stop in our faith, and we'll just stop. We'll never do helps. I'll never do administrations. And we just stop. And the other side of it is this. I don't know what God has for me. He's the God of heaven and earth. But I know this. If it's a gift from God for me, I want to get that gift. And I want to do whatever it takes to pursue to find out the gift that God has. And if he brings me to be an apostle, praise God, I want to be an apostle. But if he doesn't want me to be an apostle, that's the last thing I want to be. If he wants me to be a prophet or to operate in the gifts of prophecy, I want that. But if I don't get that because that's not God's call for me, I don't want that. Hey, if he wants me to be a carpenter, I want to be a carpenter. If he wants me to be a laborer, I want to be a laborer. If he wants me to come to the church and be a janitor and a door, uh, uh, usher at the door, and that's what God's calling on my life, 
That's what I want. See, there's no emphasis. It says in the Bible that there's, um, uh, what is that, Doug? Um, gold? It doesn't matter where we're at in the, in, in the temple. What does matter where we're at in the temple is that we're in the place that God has sent us. Amen? And God has a way about this. If he's going to use you in another place, he's got to break us down in the other place. See? Amen? Sometimes, does that make sense to anybody? So let's read on. I'm getting some blank scared stairs. Let's go to uh, the outline, Hebrews chapter 3 and 1. Let's look at God. This is his titles right here. This, this is, look at uh, chapter, Hebrews 3, chapter 1, or chapter 3, verse 1. What does he say? Therefore, what does he call us? Brethren. Holy, holy brethren, not unholy brethren, not brethren, but he calls us. Hey, I'm bringing you out of darkness into my marvelous light. And the first thing I'm going to call you is therefore my holy brethren. So you want to pursue God? The first thing you want to pursue in God is be holy. Yes, sir. Amen? That's the first person. If you want to find out what God's call on your life is, the first thing you want to do is pursue holiness. That's exactly right. See, because if we come to God and we want to be this position or that position, but we don't start off with holiness, then what he's got to do is bring us to a place to bring us to a place of surrender that we can learn to be holy. Amen? See, we all want to be used in different places sometimes, but what the importantest thing is, hey, here's another thing he wants us to walk in, humility, long-suffering, kindness. Sometimes, well, what, God, why isn't God using me here? Why isn't God? Well, are you walking in holiness? Are you walking in the fruits of the Spirit? What is the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy. Amen. Self-control, amen. Gentleness, meekness, kindness, goodness, self-control. Therefore, holy brethren, holy brethren, partakers of the what? Heavenly calling, not the earthly calling. See, sometimes, sometimes we get tired of waiting on God. So we just settle where we're at. And we just say, you know what? I'm just going to do this. And if God speaks to me, fine, I'll listen. If I'm in the mood for it, or if it's nice and loud and clear, or if it lines up with my will, because see, sometimes it, we want God's will to be our will, and God says, that ain't my will for you. He is God, we are not, amen? So sometimes what we do, and we, we feel this tug in our heart that God's leading us, it says in the scripture, for God is seeking those who what, worship him, and, and he says, and now the time is for those that will worship me with what? In spirit... And in truth, and it says if we walk in the spirit, then the thing that we do when we walk in the spirit, we walk in holiness. Amen. And sometimes in the walk that we're walking, God isn't answering the bells that we want or he's not answering the calls that we want. So then we just kind of cruise. Amen. And the whole time, what's God's trying to do? He's trying to lead us to whatever our call is. Amen. But if we stop pursuing the call of God. It says it in Hebrews or Ephesians chapter 4. He says, uh, uh, fulfill your calling in Christ. Amen? So let's read on. In the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high... Consider what? The apostle, Christ, and the high priest of our what? Confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to who? The Father, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all of his house. Amen? So what do they call him? Was Christ an apostle? Yes. And you, you notice on that it's got a capital A for apostle? What does that mean? Deity. Deity. Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is what I know about me. I know I'm a nobody. I know I came when I got saved. I was under the bushes. I was under the bridge. I'm not very good at uh, communication. I'm not very good with social aspects. You see what I'm saying? And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm the first one to kind of not do it. But this is what I found out in my life with God. He keeps taking me to places I'd rather not go in my own flesh 
but he keeps bringing me to places that he wants me to go to. Amen? But you can't give up. Has anybody experienced that in your walk with God? That he keeps bringing you to places you'd rather not go. Amen? See, when he's, that's it. Why do you think he brings you to places that you'd rather not go? To comfort zone. Why else? Because we're fleshly people, and we want the good, we want the flesh, we want the blessings, we want the prosperity, we want the easy trip, right? But in that, that's not God's call for us. What is God's call for us? To lay down our life. Amen? To serve. Exactly right. Mike, God's got you in a great place where you're at. You know what? He's going to use you there by your serving those people. God's going to show you how to serve the church of Christ. Amen? And he's going to do miraculous things in you, brother. He's going to use you as a mouthpiece. I promise you in that place and your friends that you're crying out for, they're going to get saved, brother. They are. The enemy will fight you on that, but it's going to happen, brother. Because God will bring you to places you'd rather not go. Amen? Because you know why? Do you, let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus wanted to go to the cross? He did not want to go to the cross. 30 years he had to fight with his flesh to get to the cross, knowing all along that he had to yield to the Father to get to the cross for the purpose that God had for him. And part of the purpose was the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, so that he could give you and I the gifts. See? So, so at this time, at this time, wherever you're at in your faith, I encourage you, wherever you're at in your faith, pursue God with all of your heart. Don't pursue going to church. Don't pursue just going there and doing your thing. But actually, at home, with all your heart, amen, seek the Lord. And when you come here, don't try to listen to, to me necessarily. Don't try to listen to Pastor Dave necessarily. But what we do is we tune our spirit, our ears, to the voice of God. And when someone speaks forward, that's what, what, what God miraculously does. When, God, when someone declares, see, God gave us the fivefold ministry to declare from the pulpit the preach word of God. Amen? Who believes that? Now, to man, it's foolishness. Have, you, have you, anybody ever sat up here sitting in the pews going, boy, that guy's crazy, whether it be me or anybody else that you're listening to? Boy, that can't be whack, Right? But let me ask you this. How about the, the prophet that God told him, hey, go lay on your side for six months? Was it six months? Yeah. Ezekiel, now, now that wouldn't your ears really, you would really be going crazy with God. What are you talking about? Six months on my side? I mean, that's far-fetched, right? How about Gideon when he says, hey, Gideon, you need to get rid of all these guys and you need to use these 300 people. See, God's ways are not our ways. So God uses the foolishness of men, the fivefold ministry, to declare the gospel. I think that we need to reestablish the fivefold ministry in the kingdom of God. Amen. And everyone in here is a part of that. I'll tell you why. Because if we're not in the fivefold ministry, we could be. And we need to be growing towards that. And if God wants it for us, and it's not something to seek. You don't seek that. What do you seek? God. No matter what it is. Even when you pay your tithes, you don't pay tithes. Go, man, I'm gonna, God's going to give me some money back. That's not why you pay tithes. You, gave, you pay tithes because you give it to God because the Word of God tells you to give it to God. Just like you, it says in the Bible, don't lie. You don't lie because it says it in the Word of God not to lie. You don't go, okay, I didn't lie, God. Now I want my pat on my back. Okay, God, I didn't lie. Now I need you to do this. That's not why you do it. You do it because the Lord spoke. And that's why he gave us the fivefold ministry and we need to reestablish it in the body of Christ. And it's the way God has chose. God has chose, not man. Ask Moses. Do you think Moses wanted to get up there and preach? And no, he even said, not, right? He did not want to do that. And he argued with God. And you can look at everyone pretty much in the Bible argue with God about something. Abraham argued with God. I don't know about Samuel. Saul did who? David. Jonah. Exactly right. But then the guy came to grips with him himself, and you know what he said? He said, I don't care. I'm going to follow God. Amen? So this is how God designs it. He puts this in place, and then he uses the apostle as another word for the word of God. The prophet is another word for the word of God, because that's all we're trying to do, declare the word of God. And then when the word of God goes forth, God knows how to speak to you right where you're at and bring clarity. However... 
if we're not seeking God at home and we just come here and we're really not seeking God while we're here, we're not going to get any direction. All we did is we went to church. And then I think this is, I believe this to be true. Many, and I'm not critiquing anybody's salvation, but I believe there are going to be a lot of church people, a lot of church goers that don't make it in the door. Because it's not the work of going to church that pleases God. It's the faith to obey the word of God, to humble your flesh, to go to church. Amen? And if we got to go to church, does anybody know the scripture that tells us why to go to church? That's just one, amen? That's right. And if we got to go to church, we might as well learn something from God. Amen? And if we come to church and God wants to speak to our hearts, man, we want to hear that. Amen? Exactly right. Exactly right. And he might, God, I don't know if you've read the Bible, but have you ever read the Bible and God said a whole bunch of mean stuff that nobody really liked to hear? Pretty tough things. Did you ever know you read the, the New Testament, all the red writings, pretty much the hardest things to swallow, isn't it? But if you listen to the Church of America today and you listen to the Gospel of America today, it's all about blessing and prosperity and give me and freedom and peace and joy and happy. But that's not what I've read in the Bible. What, this is what I've read in the Bible, that God is a holy God, a righteous God, and he loves his people. And he established a system to reach his people, mainly the blood of Christ, to reach his people. And he says he came to set the captives free. Yes, Amen. I'll tell you who should not be captive. Churchgoers. We should not be in captivity. If we're in captivity, that means either God's a lion or we're missing the mark. So if God's telling the truth, and he is the God that he says he is all powerful, all might, all authority. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. That's the God we serve. Who serves that God? That's the God I serve. Now, I hate to say it, he don't do everything I want the way I want, but it don't change him being God. He's still God. Amen. That's what makes him God. That's what makes him God. Because he's not Santa Claus like we're trying to turn him into. Well, God, you said if, you, if, if I pray and I ask, you'll give it to me. So we hold parts of scripture sometimes. But he's God. And if you're not getting what you want from God, then you need to make a change. And what's the change? Well, my heart. It's the heart, huh? Repentance. Repentance. Somebody says, well, I did repent. Yeah, but I'm not talking 35 years ago, that day when you accepted Jesus, right? I'm talking about, did you repent today for being apathetic, for being sleepy, for not listening to God, for being hard-headed, for being re rebellious? Hey, for hating your brother. Even though you just got done reading in the Bible, it says... It's better to not, hey, it'd be better than having a meal thrown, thrown around your neck, right? Or raka thrown into the judgment because of hate. Well, I don't really hate him. I'm just not going to, I'm not, you know, I'm just holding him in judgment. I'm mad at him. Well, no, you haven't forgave him, you see? And we, and we keep, and we go church after church, after service after service, and we walk around with our ang angry, our anger, our unforgiveness, our envy, our pride, our jealousies, our anxiety, our fears. And we can't figure out why we can't get ahead. And he says he's the God of heaven. He's the God of all authority. See, he's not the problem. So I, I, I encourage you, wherever you're at in your walk, when you come to church, man, I don't know if you've been noticing, but the Holy Spirit's been moving in here on Wednesday for prayer. In the, in the worship before and after, river. whether it's Bill or oh, Jim, river. there's a river. Yes. But you have to, we have to tap into it. Yes. I mean, if we're standing on the side and the river's flowing and it's taking boats where they need to go and we're missing the whole thing and we're called to be in the river, we have to say, whoa. Because he says, what's that scripture? Oh, I just had it too. Ah, oh, man. He says that, John 4, that's it too. He says, the time now is, what's that scripture, Pastor? The time now is, and even now, for those that worship him,
to worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me ask you, do you think the world is going to get any better in the next six months, next year? It's looking that way, right? Exactly right. Now is the time to sell it all. Say we, we say we're believers, but then the scripture says that the guy, he found the, the pearl of great price, and what did he do? He went and sold it all to gain it. See, the pearl of great price is God, Christ. Let me ask you, just I don't want you, what have you sacrificed to God just this week? Don't say it. If the answer is nothing, then you got to go, wow. What have I laid down in my heart and in my mind and on my TV program and in my money and in my job and in my attitude? What have I sacrificed? Where have I came to God and praised him and bowed before him and cried out to him and pleaded with him? Lord, I remember he says the one guy was sitting there uh, touting his chest. How good are you? The other guy's sitting there begging, Lord, help me. Have mercy on my soul. See, repentance isn't something we did. It's a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's an attitude. It's, man, who am I that you would save me? That I, What can I do for you, God? Amen? Think about that. Let's read on. I'm not even trying to get there, but I'm, hey, I'm trying to encourage you. I am encouraging you. I'm not trying to yell at you. I am excited. But you know what? I look around and I see the Church of America and we are in dire need and it ain't going to change. It's up to you and I to take the bull by the horns and say, we're going to make some changes. I'm going to start making some sacrifices. I'm going to do what I said I am. I'm a believer. I'm going to start applying the word of God to my life. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. And I'm talking about everyone in this room. Amen? Because we have got to do that. And if it's not changing, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. But the good thing about God, he said, oh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and cry out to me and turn from their wicked ways. So, so if we've gotten off the beaten path, if we've gotten hard, if we've gotten calloused, if we've gotten prideful, if we've gotten this, we've gotten that, we can stop right there and turn back to God and just say, oh, God. God, would you just meet me right here once again? Lord, would you forgive me? You know, it'd be some, you'd be surprised. Ah. One quick repentance can take the burden right off your heart and throw it away. See, sometimes we seek the cure and not the curer. He might hold the cure because he's, he knows all you want is the cure. And then when you get the cure, you're going to go back out there. He says, I want you to know me. Because you know when you, 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 do you know when you know God, it's a whole lot harder to sin against him when you know yeah, him intimately. It. It's a whole lot harder when you're in meeting with him and, he's, and you're going to church and the Lord speaks to your heart and he plants vision and he plants this and you go at home and you're on your knees before God and you're reading your Bible and he's speaking right to your life. And then you get up and go, oh, I'm just going to go do this or go do that. It's a whole lot harder when you've had that intimacy with God. It's like getting, it's like me and my wife walking down the road and me doing dirty stuff right in front of her. Because that's what, really what it is. You see what I'm saying? It's a whole lot harder once you've been intimate with somebody to do these things right in front of them. Amen? I don't even know if I'm going to get there. Ah. <sighs> This is, this is what some of us are doing. Me and Mike talked about this. He's up at 5 a.m. I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm going to start praying and seeking the Lord, knowing that he's over there praying and seeking the Lord. Amen? If anybody wants to join at the 5 a.m., we're going to call it the 5 a.m. prayer meeting. Right where your house Right where you're at. But you can know that somebody else is praying at 5 a.m., and you can enter into prayer with them. Knowing, and at 5 o'clock we're here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. If you can't be here, then you could be at home. Judy's told me before, she's at home praying. Amen? If somebody says, hey, I'm usually praying at 7 o'clock at night. I want to have 7 o'clock. And someone says, I'm usually up at 7 o'clock trying to pray. I'm up at 10. We can have a 10 o'clock one. Amen? 
Because this is the thing. It's not going to get any better unless we, the church, grab the reins and we start taking responsibility and accountability for, for this church body. That's why it's so important that you pay tithes. It's so important that you put that in there because you know what? That money doesn't just go in a bank account. It goes for the gospel. You know what I'm saying? There's no money being put in people's pockets. You don't see, uh, you don't see million dollar airplanes and stuff floating around here. That ain't going on. But it's not just about ties. It's about the body of Christ. You and I, right where we're at. See, if it's just about doing a service, then it's just about doing a service. But if it's no, I'm a warrior. I'm a man, and I'm a woman of God. And I want what God has for me. And whatever it takes to apprehend that, I'm in. And you know what happens? This church changes. And when this church changes, the neighborhood changes. And then when the neighborhood changes, it grows. And there's, I promise you this, there's other churches somewhere else doing the exact same thing. And they're trying to find God. They're not just trying to go to church, they're trying to find God. And you and I have to be the ones that find God. Amen? We have to make that the, the, the decision of our We need to get up tomorrow morning and say, man, how can I find God? How can I pursue God? And it's not always just reading and preaching and, and all these things. It's a heart state on God. It's a heart state on God. God, I'm willing. I'm willing. Amen? Does anybody have anything they want to share? Go ahead, Mike. How is it evident to you that it's getting stronger? Because the more I give unconditionally, mm -hmm. the more I receive. And what are you receiving? Just uh, power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, instead of just asking, asking, thinking, thinking, and, you know, in prayer, like, oh, Lord, I need this, I need this. It's like, what are you, what are you doing for God? That's right. It's right. And the more you give to God, the more you receive. But you, you don't stop there. You keep on giving to God. You have perfect communion with God. And before you know it, you are a lot stronger than the Holy Spirit. Are you feeling joy bubbling up inside you? Yeah. And I know what I'm saying is true. Amen. I, I just know. Amen. Sure. Amen. Who feels drawn by God in the last weeks, months, Amen. Amen. Are you responding? Amen. Anybody else want to share? Go ahead, brother. Well, on the outline on item six. Yes. You have, if they come from God, if the gifts come from God ah. and are in God, you should be confident in them. I know. I wanted to read that, too. So I want to read you James 1, verse 17. Read it. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift, every good gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights. Amen. Exactly right. Exactly right. Nope. And that's what the enemy tries to sow in our midst. We get caught up and look at, well, I can't give a thing, give, and I can't sacrifice a thing, give. I ain't going to do this. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It matters what God is speaking to you, and are you responding? And if we're responding to what God's speaking, guess what? You're getting a gift from God. Amen? But God doesn't always, he's, to get those, it's going to take sacrifice, faith, obedience, laying down our life. Amen? That's how we get the gifts. Now, he's willing to just give you bowls of cereal and food here and groceries there, and that's all right, too. But that's not the depths of God. He's the living waters himself. Amen? He's the bread of life. That's what he wants. To eat. All those things are going to come, but the most important thing is what we get from God himself, and it meets us in our heart. And that's how we get healing. 
That's how we overcome our fears. That's how we overcome our perversions. That's how we overcome our sins. That's how we can overcome our lies. That's how we overcome our deceptions. Because when we recognize how God, awesome God is, we come to him and we sur surrender and sacrifice to him. You know what he does? He goes, this one wants me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fill him. I'm going to give him more of me. I'm going to let him experience more of me. And slowly, we change. And then in that process, we start getting more bold. We get more confident. And we keep going forward because when we surrender to God, he's always leading us to the next thing. But if we're, not, we're just like, ah, uh, we don't go nowhere. It takes action. It's going to cost. Amen. Did you have something, Mikey? Amen. 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 I believe, Marvin, you have something? Oh, you have to go there, huh? You know, well, we know they can teach it. I don't even want to get into all that. You know what? That's a whole other thing. There's Jews and Gentiles, male and female. There's uh, every person, male, female, child, has a use in the body of, of God. Amen? God used women all through the Bible. Matter of fact, nobody would be here if a woman didn't show, if the woman didn't go to work. Right? Go ahead, sister. <laughs> Exactly. 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 Think about this. How many people got two ears? Did you notice one hears better than the other? Does one eye, see, they work different, just like you're saying. Go ahead. They work different. Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. Oh. Yes. Exactly. Exactly right. The same word. Yes. Yep. Exactly right. And hey, and God specifically put us in the body of Christ to be used in our gifts differently, but in the same purpose. You see? Because when we get that understanding... Hey, I'm not like that guy or her. I talk different. I walk different. But see, we can minister to different people because of that very thing. Because we have more people. Some people are more gentle. More people are, some people are more rough. Some people are this. You see, there's all different styles. Amen? But that's the body of Christ. But when we come to the body, the church of God, and we're trying to pursue what God has for us, all that stuff crumbles aside because it doesn't it's not important what's important is that the body of christ is edified and why is it important that the body of christ is edified so that god can use us to reach a lost and dying world yeah, that want to come in there amen that want to come in and they want to meet god and they don't want hey we don't want to make a bunch of religious people we want people to come in these doors and have an encounter with god where god god not the person, God reaches down to the depths of their soul and lets him, makes himself known to that person. And then God can lead them to the next step. Amen? And you know what? In that process, he uses us. I say it like this. He uses us in spite of us. Amen? 
Go ahead, Brother Sam. Amen. Amen. That's right. Anybody else? All right. Woo! <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah. That's heavy. And separation from God. Wow. Think about that. Amen. 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 And he did. And see, sometimes we get going like that with God, and we're saying, come on, God, is there no other way? And he's like, nope, 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 there's no other way. So we just stop. Because what we want to do is yield to the Holy Spirit. And say, God, nevertheless, thy will be done. What is it going to take me to get past this stage of my life? What is it going to take me to get to the next level? What is it going to take me to get this out of my heart? What is it going to take me to be used of you? What is it going to take for me to have peace, you see? So we're going to have um, Brother Jim come up. I mean... If you need to leave, leave. But if, if you would like to come to the altar and get some things off, you can be in the altar right where you're at, but there's always something about going forward. There is. The devil, that's, why there's a, that's why there's such a fight. When you think about going forward and you get this, that's the devil. Because the devil doesn't want us to be humble or broken or swallow our pride and come up and admit we have problems. And then we take them out. Is this the only place that they can be changed? No. It can be done at home. But if we're not doing it at home, it can't be done at home. We have to put in the work wherever the work is. Amen. So we're going to take the time right now just to worship God. You can come up. If you want prayer, we can pray. If you want to sit where you're at, sit. But just meditate on God. Worship God. And, and don't just sing the words, but sing the words to God. Whatever they are, whatever they might be. They're usually love songs or adoration or praise to God or an inviting to God, whatever it might be. But we want to do that. We want to just sing to God. And then we sit before him and wait and wait because you don't know. He, he could swing by and swing through and touch every one of us at any time. But we have to have that time where we sit before God. So let's worship the king. Amen. I don't know if you're on or not. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer for I have overcome the world and these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world you shall have of good cheer for I have overcome the world in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer be of 
good cheer for I am overcome my peace I It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live, my peace I give unto you. joy I give unto you. It's a joy that the world cannot give. It's a joy that the world cannot understand. Joy to It's a love that the world cannot give. It's a love that the world cannot understand. Love to know, love to live. My peace. The world can give you peace. Repentance can give you peace. Right choices can give you peace. Obedience. The Holy Spirit can give you peace. So if you don't have peace, if you don't have joy, this is the time to get it. Who cares what anybody else thinks? If you need peace, Get to the altar, we'll pray. God will do it. It's not a magic pill. It's faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. The starting point is, God, I need peace. I have no peace. I can't sleep at night. I can't rest. No rest for my soul. I'm tired. I need your peace. It is His good pleasure. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up, up into heaven. And he shall lift you up higher and In the sight of the Lord, thyself in the sight of the Lord, sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up higher and higher, and He shall lift you up up into heaven, and He shall. God. Sing it to him. 
we say what can I do well we can have our heart and mind stayed on God we can have our ears tuned to his voice we can cry out for the body of Christ we can cry out for those that are sick in this body we can cry out for this nation Lord God pray for our government Lord I pray for the unborn babies Lord we pray for the next generation the youth the children Lord God Lord if I need to sacrifice show me how and when Lord God Give me faith, Lord God. Give me ears to hear your voice. He's the God of heaven and earth. He'll move mountains. But know this, he'll also bring you up to the Red Sea. It'll look impossible. And the devil will be charging you and it'll seem impossible. But God has a way through. But the way through is him getting glory. It's him doing the work. He's going to get glory. We can't take his glory. He's going to do it his way. If we yield, we can be a part of it. If we rebel, then the scripture says, do not harden your hearts like they did in the rebellion. They refuse to go into the promised land. Even now by faith. I pray, Lord, that as we leave this place, that you would speak to every heart here. And you would remind us how much you love us, Lord God, and how mighty you are. But, Lord, we ask you to speak vision and direction, Lord God. Give us purpose. You didn't save any of us to do nothing, Lord God. You didn't save any of us to just go to church. You saved us to be carriers of the gospel. You saved us to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. That a lost and dying world could be saved. Lord, even now, by faith, we release the anointing of the Holy Spirit on every vessel here. And that you would use us as we go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Pastor, you coming up?
go ahead and turn on the lights, Bill. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> God gives us gifts. Amen. Every one of us here in this room, you have Amen. gifts that God wants you to use in the building up of the body of Christ Amen. for the equi equipping of saints for the work of service. Yes, so, it, and not one gift is you know, more important than the other. We need all the Everyone. gifts functioning together. So we all have a place in the body of Christ. God wants to use us. So get plugged in. Amen. Get plugged in somewhere. And, uh, you know, this coming up, I mean, prayer time, 5 to 6, been awesome. You know, you can come anytime during that, that hour. Um, men's Bible study tomorrow night. Ladies, tell your husbands, go to the Bible study. You need to grow. We're going through 1 Peter. That's on Thursday night. Friday night, you know, the movie night. God is not dead. Guess what? God's not dead. And it just gives you some apologetics to talk to other people about the Lord. And then our regular Friday night, Saturday night service. But next week, uh, Dan will be preaching on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. And uh, senior Bible study. Anybody here, you're welcome to come on Tuesday, uh, 1030. A great little group of people, 15, 20 of us. And uh, God's really ministering there. And then our normal Wednesday night. And then for all the ladies, guys, tell your wives, go to Bible study. Next Thursday night. Okay, a new Bible study we're going to be starting next Thursday night. And then next Friday <clears throat> is Praise and Worship Night. Amen. Just a sweet time of letting the presence of God come here. Amen. Baptism. Yeah. If you've never been baptized or you backslid or you were baptized as a baby, you know, you need to be baptized. You know, that was one of the things Jesus said. Come and be baptized. Does it mean... If you're not baptized, you're not saved. No. But it's just an outward sign of God, of your commitment to Jesus. Obedience. Obedience. So that's coming up. Everybody's been asking. August 7th, 1 o'clock. And we have flyers now um, back in the back somewhere about that. And then another way you can serve, Vacation Bible School, August 22nd to the 26th. Uh, that week it'll be from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. And uh, so a lot of things are coming up. We want you to get involved. And uh, God's doing a work, and he says he's not going to leave that work unfinished. We're, I, I mean, I see the body growing yeah, spiritually. Amen. And that's what we need. We need the body to grow. I mean, who would have thought on a Thursday or a Wednesday night there'd be 41 people sitting here in a Bible study? I don't know many churches around town that have 41 people meeting on a Wednesday night. Or last night, 30-plus people meeting. You know, I mean, God's doing a work. And, uh, you know, so there's opportunities all throughout the week to come together. You know, I mean, if you can't make them all, you can't make them all. But make the ones you can because people are drifting away from the faith. They're being bombarded by Satan's lies. And so they're like the lost sheep. And what happens when you get the sheep alone? The wolves come, wolves Amen. come, the lion comes and wants to devour you. And that's why we need the body of Christ. Yeah. We need each other. Amen. And Amen. praying for each other. And we have a great time of prayer, but you don't have to come here. You can be praying at your houses as well. It's great to see everybody, but hey, pray for one another, Scripture said. Pray for John, yeah. He's now going to go to a medical-assisted uh, place for a while. So pray for John. Pray for Will. You know, others in the body of Christ. And uh, Dan's doing a great job preaching the word. You know, doing a great job. And, uh, you know, I hope you're taking notes. I mean, I get... Every time preaching, man, I take notes. I go, that's good. I want to write that down. I want to remember that, you know. Take notes. And then you can go back through them throughout the week and let God encourage you and exhort you. So the food bank's open. They'll, and uh, help yourselves. Uh, pray. 
it's not free. We're going tomorrow to the food bank, and we never know what what they're going to have available. So just pray, you know, that, I mean, Will was telling me today a lot of the different supplies we have are getting really low. And uh, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. And sometimes it costs a couple hundred, three hundred dollars on up. So um, pray for that. We'll be back here. We go at 11. Well, we actually go at 10. They let us in at 11. We're back here around 12. If anybody wants to help put the stuff away, be here at 12. And uh, so God's God's good. He's good. Great to see all of you here tonight. Great to see you. Praise God that you're here on a Wednesday night. Best place to be, isn't it? God bless you. Have a great night.